I'm talking about I will die, y'all. And we're here this morning to celebrate 73 years of praise in our God. 73 years of giving His name the praise. 73 years of lifting them up higher and higher and higher. So Lord, we go. There is nobody like our God. Hallelujah. And for that, we magnify Him. And for that, we glorify Him. And for that, we lift Him up. For that, we shout, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our God is to be praised. I don't know about you, but I, Hallelujah. 73 years is a long time. Amen. And, and I will tell you that it hasn't been without fight or struggle. But, but the reason that we're here, the reason that we've made it is because my God is a keeper. Amen. Anybody know God is a keeper? Won't he keep you? Hallelujah. In the midnight hour, he'll keep you. He's been keeping us year after year, day after day. Some of y'all that's like me, minute after minute, second after second, millisecond after millisecond, God
He connects what we're doing in this house, with the houses, wherever you're watching us from. He connects us all together. Amen. And he makes us one. And so we come this morning, hallelujah, asking that God would make us all one. One in worship and one in praise. Sister Breed is going to come now and she's going to give us our invocation. That's the inviting of the Holy Spirit into this place, into this place into our heart, into this space, into the space of social media. She's going to come and do that this morning. Amen. 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 Glory Amen. to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. I just repeat, keep repeating that over again. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you, God,
one in your family needs deliverance. He is your father. He is your intercession. Or, or maybe you need to be healed. He says, God is right.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. If you know he's worthy, why don't you give him praise? If he showed himself worthy in your life, why don't you give him praise? If he's done anything in your life, hallelujah, why don't you give him praise? Uh, and I don't know about you, but here's one thing he did for me. He woke me up this morning. I tell you another thing he did for me. He woke me up this morning. I got another thing he did for me. He woke me up this morning. God is on my way. Hallelujah. Who does my name on? Glory to you. And I know that his name on. Who knows my back? Who knows my back? Yeah, he's a group of lives. Yeah, he's a little bit of a That's why we say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give a praise. Here is why you give a praise. You give a praise for one or two reasons. You give a praise for what he's already done. Hallelujah. He's already made the way. He's already opened the door. He's already brought me out. He's already been me through. He's already been some stuff. He's already restarted some stuff. He's already restored. He's already restarted that one good day. Why I give him a praise. Why I got another reason why I give him a praise. Because he's been ready to do some stuff. And because what I know he's done before, I know he's been ready to do it again. And I give him a free praise. I made him a free praise in the house. And he's given him a praise in the house. I know he's been ready to do it. Lord, I thank you for saving my son. It ain't happened yet, but I can see it happening. And so I bless you, praise you. Lord, I thank you for healing me. Hallelujah. It ain't happening in the natural yet, but it's happening in the spirit. And it's getting ready to happen for me. And I give you praise. I thank you. Yeah. And you survive. Because you know what you see in the mail, you see Gipsco, Indian American water, amen, and, and, and it seems like all the rates just keep going high enough, very store water management district, get tax bills and all that kind of stuff, all that comes in, in the mail, but we got something in the mail today, amen. Amen. I told you all, we partnered with a church down in Bloomington, Indiana. Amen. And it's just how God works. Look how God works. On our anniversary, we got a check from them. Amen. It, it, it wasn't just for January. It's for January and February. $833.34. All the way from Bloomington, Indiana. Somebody got a check from Hallelujah. Nobody but God, y'all. Nobody but God. 
and because we're doing what God has called us to do. Amen. Being faithful and good stewards. Amen. Amen. We're being good stewards and they trust that we're going to be good stewards. People ain't going to just give y'all money, y'all. Amen. Amen. They don't just write you a check. Amen. For no reason. Amen. And so they trust that we're doing what God has called us to do. And for that, I'm grateful and I am thankful. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful and I'm thankful for what God has done, what God is doing, and what God is going to do. Join us again at 6 o'clock, 8 a.m. every morning. We're on the prayer line, 6 o'clock, 8 a.m. every morning. Join us. We're in the month of submission. Amen. And we looked at what that word meant on yesterday, and we were just, Sister uh, Pastor Birch and I, we were the only ones on the call yesterday, so we had a good time. Amen. Yesterday on the prayer line, we had a real good time diving into the Word of God. Amen. Amen. God revealed some things. God confirmed some things. So join us on the prayer line. Everyone, this morning, same thing. Amen. 6 o'clock, 8 a.m. every morning. We're in the month of submission. Submission simply means, hallelujah, that, 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 that you come to the place not with your own agenda, but you come, hallelujah, to, to help further the agenda of the place that you come to. Amen? It means that you voluntarily sign up and say, I give in. In other words, Jesus said, she said like this, Lord, not my will. Okay, y'all know what that means. Amen. But your will be done. And that's what you ought to do. That, that's what you've done when you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You said, Lord, I'm on your agenda. And I'm no longer on. Amen. I'm no longer on my end. Join us each morning. Join us this Wednesday. This Wednesday at noon. We have our Bible study. We're journeying through the Word. Amen. 52 weeks. We're on a journey from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. We looked at Genesis and Exodus. And now we're looking at Leviticus. So you can go ahead and read it here. We're 30,000 feet at, uh, uh, above uh, ground level. And every now and, and then the plane gonna land. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about some things in some detail, but then we're gonna get back up in the air, amen? amen? Amen. So come and join us as we journey through the entire Bible, 52 weeks of learning the Word of God, amen? And then don't forget for those uh, who are journeying with us, we have the Word in the Heart Challenge, 52 weeks. Every week we learn a scripture, amen? Every week, so it, ain't, it shouldn't be too hard to learn a scripture in a week, amen? Here's what you do, three times a day, amen? Just repeat the scripture, go into the Word and repeat it three times a day. I don't care what three times, but three times a day, and by Saturday, you should know what that word is. Amen. Why is God doing this? God said he wants his word in our heart. Amen. So when trouble times come, we ain't got to go searching for nobody. We ain't got to try to find a pastor or the deacon or my favorite preacher, minister, or whatever. How do you go straight to the God's word said? Amen. Why? Because it's in your it's in your heart with the 52 week word challenge join us in the word 52 week word challenge if you will amen thank you to all of those all of those who joined us on um thursday i believe it was thursday no wednesday it was wednesday it was the 16th amen and i thought about it um we we had a homegoing celebration for pastor hartfield amen he was the second uh uh, co-laborer in this vineyard and we celebrated that fact this this past Wednesday. Amen. 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 He, 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 he was here 15 years. Amen. As the pastor of this flock and as I was going through our history um, I noticed something. I noticed Pastor Birch that on yesterday Pastor, Pastor Ben Douglas, we, we celebrated him on yesterday, February 19, 1996, is when we had a homegoing celebration for Pastor Ben Douglas. And three days before that, on 
February 16, 2022, we had a homegoing celebration for Reverend Dr. Benny Hartfield Jr. I don't know what all that means, but it means something to me. It just caught my attention as I was going through the history. And it said, three days. And I know something about three days. You ought to know something about three days. Amen. It looked dark on Friday. But early Sunday morning, he got up. I believe that that's what it means, amen. And something getting ready to happen, amen. Something getting ready to change, hallelujah. There's no coincidence what God does, hallelujah. It ain't no accident that it happened in that way, hallelujah. All these years later, in the same month, and three days apart. So God got something for us, church. I feel it in my spirit. Amen. Do you feel it? Do you receive it? God has some. So thank you all for your prayers. I felt them. I had to uh, 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 eulogize pastor. My pastor, my father in the ministry. It wasn't easy, but God gave us the strength. Amen. And so I thank each of you for your prayer. Continue to pray for the Hartfield family. Amen. Let's continue to keep that family lifted up. In our prayers. We have a preacher this morning. Amen. Amen. He's here to celebrate with us. Amen. 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 His brother, Pastors Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church here in Gary. His brother is Pastor Charles Adams. We're so gracious that he allowed uh, his brother, Reverend Andre Adams, to come and to share with us in our 73rd church anniversary. Amen. 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 I, I've seen him. We work together in the Baptist Ministers Conference and I've seen and noticed him. He loves God. He loves to worship God. Hallelujah. He loves the word of God. Amen. And, and he is here this morning. He's a lover of God. And, and the next preaching voice you hear will be that of Reverend Andre Adams. Why don't you receive him by the elevation of your right hand? Say, Reverend Adams, preach the word. Reverend Adams, preach the word. Reverend Adams, preach God's holy word. Israel, 
Thou hast not brought me the small cattle, thy burnt offerings, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins, thou hast wearied me with thy iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. And if you would allow me just for a few minutes to talk about, I'm doing a new thing. Amen. I'm doing a new thing. Many of us here this morning, if we're honest with ourselves, would admit that we have areas in our lives where we are dissatisfied and have no joy. We make promises that we haven't been able to keep. We've experienced failures and setbacks. We're not sure how we can pay today's bills, let alone how we can contribute more to the church. But the beauty of Isaiah's word to us is quite simple. It's not over until God says it's over. Amen. God is more interested in your future than your past. Amen. Let me share with you the story, the narrative behind our text and the basis of today's message. In this 43rd chapter, the prophet Isaiah is doing what he does best. Serves as a mouthpiece for the Lord doing one of the most trying times in the history of the Israelites. And at this time, the Israelites are being held captive in Babylon and are in the lowest point. They're not just discouraged, but fully defeated, deflated, and depressed. And has anyone else been there today? Well, at this low point, God sing, sends a word through the prophet Isaiah. He sends a message because God knew that his people needed some reassurance and went about reassuring them in the 43rd chapter by first telling them who he is. In verse 1, he tells them that he is their creator, the one who made them out of nothing. In verse 4, he tells them that he is their Lord, that he is the one who loves them and that they are precious in his sight. Yeah. In verse 14, he tells them that he is their redeemer, that he is all they need when in bondage. Yes. Then in verse 15, he tells them that he is the Holy One, that he is the one who keeps his promises. Yes. But if I was facing a major problem in my life, had some hills to climb, right. had some giants to deal with, had some raging rivers to cross. These are things that would reassure me. Yeah. How about you today? Yeah. Well, if that isn't enough, in verses 16 and 17, he reminds them of the great things that he had done for their forefathers. Amen. Brought them out of bondage yeah. in Egypt. Then in the middle of the Red Sea, mm -hmm. he made a highway for his people and a graveyard for their enemies. God is powerful. Yes, he is. If you're not sure, think about what he has done for you. Some of us face Pharaoh's armies in the form of a doctor's diagnosis that death was your destination. Some of us face Pharaoh's armies when we lost a job or found ourselves not being able to pay for a bill. As a church family, you may have faced Pharaoh's army when your church building may have seemed to be falling down around you, and you were few in members. But in every one of those situations, somebody is a witness to the fact that God has made a way that seems no way. Yes. And when you think about all the Lord has done, when you think about what changes have been made, somebody ought to say amen. amen. But in verse 18, God says, forget about your past. Forget about the former things. Don't think about it. In other words, God says, you ain't seen nothing yet. And I'm about to do something brand new. 
Would that excite you? Amen. Would that encourage you? Amen. You must truly believe that God is able to see you through. Yes. You, must, you must not have an I hope so kind of faith. Yes, yes. I think so kind of faith. I wish kind of faith. You have to have an I know so kind of faith. See, faith that will allow you to use your failures and setbacks as a stepping stone. Yes. Faith that tells you in your darkest hour yes. that God is bigger than your most powerful enemy. Bye -bye. Faith, Faith that tells you that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Yes. But to experience the new and amazing thing that God has prepared for you, you must act on your faith. And to act, we need to do the things that the Lord requires of us. We must first change our thinking. Amen. In Romans 12 and 2, it says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Yes. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Yes. See, we all like new things, don't we? Amen. There is always something new, something different, something better than what we have right now. My God. A new phone, a new car a new computer, new clothes, there's always new technology and new styles going on. All right. But this morning in the book of Isaiah, God says, I am doing a new thing. Amen. What is this new thing that God is doing? How can anything related to Christianity be new thing? I thought Christianity was an old thing. A religion that has been around almost 2,000 years <coughs> 2,000 years, something from the past, something becoming more and more obsolete. What does God mean when he says, I am doing a new thing? Yeah. In verse 18, God says, forget the former things. All right. Do not dwell on the past. Yeah. Do you know the setting of these words? These words were originally meant to be words of comfort yeah. for the people in captivity and God's chosen people were going to be overrun by a foreign nation called Babylon. All right. The Jews would be taken far away from their homeland. There they would be reminisced about the old days. All right. Remember when God rescued us from Egypt? Right. Remember when God parted the Red Sea and defeated all the nations that stood in our way? Yeah. He did all of that just for us. Those were the days. But God says, do not dwell on the past. Yeah, right. See, I am doing a new thing. Yeah. Now it springs up. Do you not know it? God. God was telling the people that while he did some amazing things for them in the past, yeah. they hadn't seen nothing yet. Yeah. He was going to rescue them again. Mm -hmm. See, I am making a way in the desert yeah. and streams in the wasteland. God's people were trapped in a country that was surrounded by one of the most barren, most deadly deserts in the world. All right. Even if they escaped from their captors, they would never make it through the deserts. But God was going to do the impossible. All right. He was going to set up a highway for them to walk on. He was going to provide water for them as they journeyed back to the promised land. The wild animals honored me. The jackals and the owls, because I provide the water in the deserts yeah. and streams in the wastelands to give drinks to my people, my chosen people, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Yeah. Even the wild animals would notice all the good things God was doing for his people. Amen. Not only would those animals praise God, but the people of Israel would praise God too for all the amazing new things God was planning to do for his people. Amen. See, this new thing that God eventually did for the Jews during the history, they were eventually released, released from captivity. All right. They eventually survived that difficult trip through the desert and returned to their homeland. All right. What does this have to do with Christ? Mm. Can you see Christ in these words? God says, I am making a way in the desert. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. God says, I am making streams 
in the wasteland. And Jesus says, whoever drinks the water I give will never thirst. Just as God was doing a new thing for Israel, rescuing them, right now God is doing a new thing for you right now. He's rescuing you, rescuing you from this world which is passing away. Do you know it? I am doing a new thing. God is creating a new way for you to get to heaven. A new way for you to be right with God. A new way for you to have sure hope of eternal life. And that new thing is Jesus Christ. Yes. See, he is our highway in the desert. He is our oasis, our streams in the wasteland. Yeah. Jesus is the new thing that God is doing for us. See, the people of Israel didn't deserve the things that God was doing for them. Yet, you have not called upon me, O Jacob. You have not wearied yourselves for me, O Israel. The people of Israel were praying to God. They weren't worshiping him with their lives. They weren't offering to God any kind of sacrifices. As the text verses describe, the only thing that they were giving to God was their sins. But have you burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your offenses? My God. These people did not deserve to have God rescue them, My God. to take them through the deserts to the promised land. These people were paying no attention to God, sinning away and thinking that everything was okay. My God. And so it is with us. God gives to us this new way to heaven, yes. all through Jesus Christ. It is the gift of grace that we don't deserve. And then we look at our lives and we realize that we are not much different from the people of Israel. How little we pray to God about the things on, in our lives. And we are always looking for reasons not to worship with other Christians on Sunday. Only when we have absolutely nothing else to do will we pray to God and honor him and worship him as the creator and savior. See, you have not called upon me, God says to us. You have not wearied yourselves for me. Instead, we pile onto God our sins. Yes. We worship money. Mm -hmm. We allow ourselves to be tainted by the immortalities of life. Yes. We allow ourselves to be tainted we talk about people behind their backs. Jesus. We fail to love the people that God has placed in our lives. Amen. The list can go on and on and on. Yes. But God says to us, you have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your offenses. My God. God is weighed down by all our mistakes, yes. all the sins we commit in our lives. Jesus. See, you would think that God would punish us. Yes. But instead, God tells us this morning, that he's doing a new thing. Instead of sending us to hell, he's giving us eternal life. Instead of letting Israel rot away in captivity, he leads them back to the promised land. Why is God doing this new thing? It doesn't seem to make sense until you see the last verse of our text. I, even I, he who blocks out our transgressions for my own sake, and remember our sins no more. See, God was going to do all these things for Israel yes. for his own sake. Amen. Because he is such a gracious God. Yes. Yes. He would forgive them yes. and bring them to the promised land. Yes. But do you see the picture of forgiveness here? To block out our transgressions. Yes. See, this past week or two weeks ago, something new happened in the southern parts of this country. The biggest snowfall they have ever seen. Yeah. Some had snow before, but this snow was a new thing. In, in New Mexico, in Texas, Mississippi, and Georgia, yeah. never before had they seen so much snowfall in a 24-hour period of time. Yeah. And someone who was interviewed, he was uh, said that he actually liked the snow. It covered up everything. He said all the dirty streets and sidewalks, all the brown grass, all the dirty cars, they all disappeared. The snow makes everything beautiful. 
But isn't that just like God with our sins? He covers them up. All the dirt in our lives, all that sin, God blocks it out, and he covers it. Not by snow, but by something different. By a new thing. And the new thing is the blood of Jesus Christ. See, when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, he was covering our sins. Blotting out our transgressions. Because of Jesus, our lives are beautiful in Christ's eyes. Our sins are forgiven. Someday, when you stand before God on judgment day, you won't have to worry that God will remind you of your sins. God won't say to you, remember you did this? Remember you did that? Because of Christ, God remembers our sins no more. And to take away our guilt, that's the new thing that God is doing for you. To take away your doubt, you are going to heaven when you die. To give you confidence that every day, things are okay between you and your God. These are the new things that Christ is doing for you right now. But the first step to embracing the new thing what God wants to do in your life is, first thing, change your focus. Quit looking back, starting looking ahead. Forget the past thing. Do not dwell on the past. If you are continually looking back, you can't see what's in front of you. If you are ever going to move on to the new things in Christ, you must learn that you cannot depend upon past victories to sustain you. Forget the former things. See, the children of Israel had many victories in their past. Amen. Leaving Egypt, conquering the land of Canaan, yeah. fighting a prospective conquerors, survived a split in their country, yeah. but now they are in captivity. Uh -huh. All their previous victories were doing nothing to set them free. Right. They needed a new work, yeah. a new miracle, and a new victory. And the question isn't, what has God done? The question must be, what is God doing in your life right now? What is it that you want him to do in your life right now? But in order to move on to the new thing, Christ, you must know that you cannot allow your past failures to possess you. Do not dwell in your past. The children of Israel had failed God miserably. Every time he blessed them with good things, they returned to him evil things. God gave them the temple. They gave him idol worshipers. God gave them truth. They lived and proclaimed a lie. God gave them his commands. They lived like they were suggestions. God gave them wealth. They used it to abuse the poor. God gave them himself. They gave him nothing but rejection. See, Israel did not deserve to receive anything from God. Yet God still loved them and he earnestly wanted to help them change. Notice God's message. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing in your life. God was not condemning them for their past. They could do nothing to change it. Instead, God was holding out the hand of hope. He is, he is in effect saying, forget about your past. I am giving you an opportunity to start over. Isaiah 55 and 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to, to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. See, if you are going to get anywhere in your spiritual life, you must start, you must understand that you cannot live on yesterday's faith. The children of Israel had experienced great spiritual blessings throughout their history. From the first Passover, to the crossing of the Red Sea, to the conquering of the land of Canaan, to the building of the temple, the children of Israel had seen the hand of God at work in and through their lives. But yet, their faith in what God had done was doing nothing to deliver them from their past, from their present situation. Their old faith was not 
sufficient enough to deliver them from their present problems. Amen. They needed new faith, a new vision for what God could do. They needed a new portion of the faith that had brought to pass all the victories from before. Amen. In Psalms 85, 6 through 8, 8, it says, Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God and the people will speak. See, the second step to embracing the new thing what God wants to do in your life is to secondly clear your focus. Amen. Dis discover what God wants for you. Amen. Verse 18 says, forget not the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Yeah. And 19 says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not know it? Yeah. See, I am making a way in the desert and the streams and the wasteland. Yeah. What do you see when you view your life? My God. Do you see possibilities or problems? My God. Notice what God says. I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Yeah. See, the children of Israel had a choice. They could view their past and the problems of their present. Or they could focus upon what God wanted to do in their lives. And in order to discover what God wants for you, you must first see yourself as God sees you. Amen. The children of Israel felt as though they were getting just what they deserved because of the way they had acted. You may feel like your past had made your life a wasteland. But in God, your life can become a stream life. Romans 8, 1 and 2 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walks after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life is in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. And then Colossians 1, chapter 21 and 22, And you, there were something alienated in enemies in your mind, by wicked works, yeah. yet now have he, have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and reapprovable in his sight. Yeah. See, but in order to discover what God wants for you, yeah. you must see your possibilities as God sees them. Amen. See, he says, I am making a way in the desert. God is able to transform the desert areas of your life into fields of blessings and abundance. God can take a dried up, useless life and, and transform it into a life of purpose and grace. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit is, yeah. the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open faith, Beholding as the glass the glory of the Lord yeah. are changed into the same image from glory to glory, yeah. even as the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. And lastly, the greatest step to embracing the new thing that God wants to do in your life is commit your focus yeah. to God's plan. Yeah. See, God had already set into motion the events and people who would lead Israel out of captivity and back into the land of blessing. Amen. But it was still up to them to decide if they wanted God, wanted what God was offering. Yeah. If they refused God's plan, if they re refused to follow where God was leading, yeah. then they would be doomed to remain in their captivity. Yeah. See, I am doing a new thing. Yes. Now it shall spring up, and shall ye not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness yeah. and rivers in the deserts. God has already set into motion a new direction and a new purpose for your life. Yeah. But will you follow him today? Yeah. Too often we fail because we depend on what we understand, what we do and what we can. But Zechariah 4 and 6 reminds us that we will succeed not by our own strength yeah. or power, but by God's. Then Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us that when we face with mountains and valleys, yeah. to trust in the Lord 
with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding, and in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Yeah. Yeah. Donnie McCurkland, a gospel singer, asked some powerful questions in one of his songs. What do you do when you've done all you can, and it seems like it's never enough? And what do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone? What do you give when you've given your all and it seems like you can't make it through? When there's nothing left to do, you just stand. Watch the Lord see you through. See, when you're challenged in life or not sure what commitment you should make, even in phase two of your faith walk in the future campaign, just remember that the same power that got the children out of Israel through the Red Sea is the same power that got you through phase one and is the same power that will make a way through phase two. So just stand and watch the Lord see you through. If he can make it a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts, we know that he is able to move your present mountains out of your way. The God we serve is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think. Yeah. If we can cause, if he can cause a virgin to conceive a child, yeah. he can see us through. Yeah. If the Lord can open the Red Sea, he can open doors of opportunity. Yeah. When there seems to be no way, the Lord will create a way. Yeah. When there seems to be no present hope, yeah. the Lord will give you hope. Yeah. When there seems to be no present joy, in Christ, he will discover new joy. Yeah. When it seems to have no strength, we'll find that he can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. Yeah. See, we serve a God who is yeah. going to do a new thing in our lives. Yeah. And here in your church, yeah. the former things were great and mighty, yeah. but there's no yeah. more to come. Yeah. 73 years, he has kept you here. Yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. See, things may change, but I know a man who will always remain the same. And do you know him this morning? His name is Jesus. My rock in the weary land, my shelter in a time of storm, my doctor in a sick room, my lawyer in the courtroom, father and mother when parents had to leave me. He is almighty. He is the bright and morning star. He is Christ all by himself. He is divine. He is my everything. He is the forgiver. He is God's only begotten son. He is my healer. He is immortal. He is joy in the time of sorrow. He is king of kings. He is lord of lords. He is my master. He is down and forever. He is omnipresent. He is powerful. He quiets my storm. He is the rose of Sharon. He is my savior. He is triumphant. He understands my needs. He is victorious. He is a dope destroyer. He is delicate. He went to a hill called Calvary. He the crown of thorns on his head. They put nails in his hands, heads in his feet. He hung him high. He stretched him wide. And for me, he died. Hung there all Friday. Hung there all Saturday. Hung there all Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he was doing a new thing. He got up with all power. Shut up in his hands. Some bad morning. When this life is over, I'm going to take two wings. Fill my face. Two more wings. Fill my feet. Two more wings. I'm going to fly away to be with the Lord. Ain't God all right? Ain't nobody do me like Jesus. Ain't nobody do me like the Lord. The technologies may change. Cars may become new. Fashions may become new. Even we may act funny or become brand new. But we know that God will always remain the same. 73 years, God has kept you. He will never leave or forsake you. He will continue to be with you and carry you through. 
New day, new way, for same God. He's doing a new thing. God bless you.
for those who are going to be saved because of the word and the seed that has been planted in their soil, whether here in this sanctuary or watching by way of social media. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor and we give you the praise. We rejoice right now with the angels in heaven who rejoice over one that was lost and now is found. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise as we prepare our hearts and our minds for our ministry of giving. It's a ministry of sowing seeds. Amen. We sow seeds here at Progressive Community Church. Why don't you get your seed in your hand, amen? Whether you're here in the sanctuary or watching by way of social media, you can sow your seed by going to the cash app, the dollar sign PCC Gary. That's the dollar sign PCC Gary. You can go to Give La Five or the Tidely. And on those platforms, just search for Progressive Community Church of Gary. Progressive Community Church of Gary. And it's there. You can sow your seed. Amen. Amen. No way that I can live without you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There is no other way. Hallelujah. That I can live without you. Get your seed in your hand and lift it high. Get your seed in your hand and lift it high. We sow both physical seeds and spiritual seeds. My spiritual seed is the seed of faith and love. Amen. Then repeat after me. This is my seed. I did not deserve it. But God so graciously provided unto me. Therefore, I will sow my seed. I will sow my seed. I will sow my seed in obedience to God's word and in expectation of the harvest. 100% obedience to God, 100% obedience to timing, 100% faith. They're going to come around now and you'll have an opportunity to sow your seed this morning. Amen.
I hadn't heard about grief share before going to Bloomington, Indiana, but I thought it intriguing, uh, grief share. I was going to speak, and we were about 15 minutes, 20 minutes away from the time I was supposed to speak on the other side of the church. But, 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 but that, that sign, that poster board caught my attention. I had to go back. I asked the pastor, Pastor, what, Pastor, what, what's grief share? And he began to share a little bit. And I went back, stood in front of the board, and there was this lady there, and I asked her, what's grief share? And she began to share with me what grief share was. It was about those whose loved ones had made the transition, and, and they may have been struggling with the transition. And um, I asked for more information about grief share, and, and got the information, and I felt it in my spirit that God said that grief share was for us. Now, mind you, I was supposed to go to Bloomington at some other point, at some other time, earlier, and may not have had the opportunity to see that poster board up. Amen. This is how God works. And so we brought it back here. Amen. Amen. And we've gone, was it 12 week, 13 week? 13 week uh, uh, class. Amen. We had a cohort that gone through the first cohort of grief share. Amen. And Pastor Birch is going to come. And amen. Give her a hand. She, I asked for leads and instructors. I can do it, but I, I can't do everything, y'all. Amen. 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 It takes all of us. That's what the church is about. That's why I said earlier. Submitting ourselves and our gifts to the kingdom of God for the glory of God. That means that mean you ain't got to look for somebody to come and pat you on the back. Amen. Amen. You ain't got to come and look for somebody to come and say, you did this or you did that or all of that kind of stuff. It's for the glory, for the glory of God. Amen. So Pastor Purge, who was one of the two instructors that we had, is going to come and share uh, some with us this morning. Amen. 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 Praise God. Um, as Pastor said, we've gone through some, some sessions, a ministry really called Grief Share. And it was, it's very, it was very helpful. We started off with, is it normal? Is it normal to grieve? You know, and, and as we kept progressing through this, you know, because when you start grieving, you wonder, you know, I've got all this intenseness, this chaos that's going on, and I don't understand it. Is it normal? And in the first week, we learned that Jesus wept. Amen. Amen. And that God made us in his image. In the image of God created he him, in the image of God created he them. So if Jesus wept, it's okay for us to weep. It's okay for us to grieve. And we just kept on through the journey. We, we journeyed through uh, the challenges of grief. And we journeyed through uh, guilt and anger. And we, we journeyed through complicating factors. Maybe your loved one was in a traumatic accident. Or, or other things that have happened. Those are complicating factors on, on how you would go through grief. And, and, and what we really learn is that grief is unique to each and every one of us. We all grieve in different ways and, and we can't allow people to push us through our grief. We have to grieve the way God designed us to grieve based on the situations and circumstances of how it happened. And with that, we, we had several people who, who attended on a regular basis. They came to the sanctuary. If they couldn't come, they called in on the line and they, and they walked through the course with us. We started off with about 15 people. But out of that, five, five were dedicated. They made it through all the sessions. And we want to recognize those five people this morning. Um, 
of Miss Lovely Pearsall. I'm going to read the certificate. It says, Grief Share, Progressive Community Church. This certificate is to honor Lovely Pearsall for choosing to face your pain and fear in the midst of grief. As you continue to move forward through your grief, be assured that God loves you and knows where you are on your grief journey. You can pray to him and depend on him. As part of your healing is to comfort others. We encourage you to share what you have learned and to tell others in grief about grief share. Amen. Amen. The next person we want to honor is Frida Grace. And then a lady, her daughter, Janice Whitehead, who was on the line every session. She had to work, but she took time out of her work and called in Amen. and made sure that she went through every class. And then we have Minister Alta Dawson. Amen. 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 And, and uh, this particular lady, the last name I'm going to call, she has really blessed my life. With the insights that she had for this grief share course and the things that she brought to it and brought out of us, it was totally amazing. So I want to thank God and honor Letitia London at this time for her participation in this grief share ministry. Amen, amen. Amen. Now, now these people might not realize it, but because of their dedication, they are able to help in the grief share ministry. We might be calling on them to lead some classes or to do some other things with grief share. Because they went through the, all of the courses. We just want to say thank you. God bless you for your dedication. God bless you for your commitment. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't leave after church. I want to take a picture of this inaugural class. Amen. Amen. It's not that they they might be calling on. We will be calling on you. In fact, what we first did was said we need to get some. We need to train the trainer. It's a corporate word that simply means that. Pastor Birch and, and our Reverend Carmen McKeith um, are, are, are um, seminary trained, amen. So they, they, they could do this without the structure of a class, but, but we wanted a class that had structure and order, amen. And then all of them, I, I put out a call for trainers for grief share. And I said, before you are released to train, you need to go through the class. And we started with 15, we ended with a third, with five, amen. So they should be commended. Give them, amen, they're commended, amen. And they're going to be instructors of grief share, amen. Because grief don't stop, amen. Yeah, yeah. Or life events don't stop, amen. Those life events don't stop, amen. People will continue to, 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 to transition and to leave this place, amen, until Jesus Christ uh, comes back. That's going to happen, and people will be, and there are people who are struggling right now and don't understand that it's the grief, amen. And so what God told us is that this will bring a, a ministry that brings healing, amen. And so we thank you all. Amen. And then we have a certificate of appreciation presented by Progressive Community Church, uh, hereby certifies that Pastor Brenda Birch 
Green Share Volunteer Team member has been sacrificial in time and effort and has successfully completed Green Share Team leadership with excellence, compassion, and love for people coping with heartache and grief caused by the death of a loved one. Sustaining Green Share Ministry takes prayer and a team. Thank you for joining Progressive Community Church as a leader, facilitator to help sustain our Green Share Ministry. Team ministry lays the foundation for long-lasting ministry. The more leaders, the more ministry. The more ministry, the more participants we can serve. The more participants, the more hope and healing that can take place. We thank you, Pastor Birch. Amen for being our instructor, our team lead. Amen for Green Share. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Thank God for all of you. I want to take a picture with all of you all at the church, the five of you, and the lead. Amen? Amen. 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 Church, what an awesome ministry God has given to us. We're going to do another cohort, so if you want to sign up to go through Grief Share, I, 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 I um, suggest that you do that. Amen. If you want to be an instructor, Go through the class. Go through all of the class. Compete the classes. Here is the one thing I love about Bridge Share. You don't have to start at one. You can start at ten. Amen. Because they don't build on each other. You can get in where you fit in. As the rap song. You get in where you fit in. Amen. You don't have to start at one. Amen. And it's for lotty dotty anybody. Amen. Anybody who's brave enough to come and to face. Because this. It, 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 it is hard to face some things, amen? But 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 if you want to get healing and wholeness, amen, that's what this is about, amen? Amen, amen. Join us at 4 o'clock p.m., amen, 4 o'clock p.m. this afternoon, 4 o'clock p.m. I need to see you back here at 4 o'clock p.m. We start on time, amen. Pastor Curtis Lee is going to give us an awesome, another awesome word from God, amen, from Gethsemane Missionary Baptist Church, City of Praise Baptist Church will be here, Pastor George Hall, amen, and I need to see you back here, amen, as we come back to give God praise for 73 years of work, of worship, of ministry, of healing, of help, and of hope, amen, we're a church that believes in liberation. Amen and of salvation because we want to see people saved. Amen. Pastor uh, Reverend uh, Andre McGee is going to come back. Uh, Andre Adams is going to come back. He's going to give us final remarks and a benediction. Amen. Give him a hand as he comes.